can. So if we do something like have a tax on energy imports, or there's a reduction in the world supply of oil, how is that going to affect U.S. consumers? Can I measure the impact on consumers simply by the amount of oil that's imported times the increase in the import price? Or is there something else I might have to consider? So for example, let's say there are domestic forms of energy to which they can substitute. Is that going to reduce the cost borne by consumers because they can substitute to domestic energy? Your first reaction would be, yeah, because now they can say, well, foreign energy is more expensive. I can substitute to domestic energy. That's going to be, make me better off. I'll, I'll be able to move away from that foreign energy and the foreign energy price won't go up as much as it would because we're able to reduce our dependence on, say, foreign oil. But that's ignoring the fact that there's a market for those other inputs. And the consumer doesn't own those other inputs. So if all the consumers, so here's, here's the world oil market, right? So here's the supply of oil to the US. How would we get the supply of oil to the US? We would start with, this is to the US. We'd start with, of course, the demand for oil everywhere else in the rest of the world. We'd start with the supply of oil in the rest of the world. The US to supply to the US would start here and go up from there, right? That is, as the price rose above this level, the US would be able to import that much from abroad because that excess in the amount of oil produced elsewhere would be more than people would demand elsewhere, and that would be the amount available to come to the US. Once I had that residual supply to the US, I could think about the residual demand. I could think about the US demand. This would be the market equilibrium in the US in that world. Now, what would happen if there was reduction in the world supply of oil? That would reduce this US supply curve. Prices would rise. And the US consumers would be worse off. How much would they lose? Pretty easy to measure. They would lose that area right there. That would be the rough loss measured to them as the, due to the higher price. They would be paying more for all these units and they'd lose the surplus on those purchases. Now, what does it mean when the US consumers have a substitute? What does having a substitute do for them? How does that affect this picture? It makes the demand curve more elastic, which if their demand curve is more elastic, is mean they're going to lose less because the price is going to go up less in response to this shift in the world oil market. But when we draw that more elastic demand curve, what are we assuming? What do we assume in, in economics when we draw a demand curve? We're assuming that the price in this other market is staying fixed. Well, when people try to substitute from this market to this market, will the price stay fixed? Depends on the supply situation here. If the supply in this market was perfectly elastic, so there was a very elastic supply, say, of natural gas in the US, then this picture would tell the whole story. I could stop. But what if it was the reverse? What if the supply of this, quote, substitute product was actually fixed? Well, then the demand curve would be the same, basically, other than income effects, as if they couldn't substitute, because effectively they can't. They can try to substitute, but when they try to substitute, all they do is drive the price up. That now means the consumers are not only worse off here, but because they all try to substitute, they're actually going to be worse off over here too. They're going to push up the price in this market too. And when they push up the price in this market, that's going to add to this rectangle or this trapezoid, not subtract from this trapezoid. 
So the ability of consumers to substitute in the sense of technologically are these substitutes isn't what really mitigates their cost. Their cost can only be mitigated if they could actually substitute much more effectively to those products. The actual ability to substitute, which depends not just on the technical substitutability of natural gas and foreign oil, but also the supply condition in the U.S. of natural gas. Right? That's an example of how you would use price theory to help you answer a lot of these kind of questions. Now, should I stop here? Well, maybe the price of cars is going to change, right? This is where you got to use the judgment. This is where you have to say, okay, these effects are important enough that I have to concern. Now, how would you know whether these effects are important? This is where the data comes in. That is, what do we see happens when we have these kinds of shifts? Now, here's the real power, I think, of economics that's often lost in today's, the way we do economics today. That is, 